Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. My name. Best scrape day, you know that, you know that, you know this is Bibi, it's fine, you've been here many times. Anyway, good morning, welcome in, trickle in, trickle in, trickle in. Uh, this is Ice Cream Uploads, obviously, you know that, you know the name, uh, and this is the Scoop Your Daily Dose of News from the world of video games and beyond. We bring you the biggest, the best, and the breaking news stories live on Twitch, and then we turn this into an, a video that we put out on demand on YouTube a little bit later on today. So if you are in the chat on Twitch, please feel free to get involved. It's important because you'll be involved in that video, and then a little bit later on, you'll be involved in the audio podcast that goes out on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play as well. On demand listeners get to pause, fast forward, rewind, but they don't get to speak to the the majestic beast that is Bebe. Bebe. That's, that's French Bebe. 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 <laughs> oh, Bebe. Anyway, let's just offend our country when we start the street. Yes, nice. Uh, good weekend, Bib. Good weekend. Yes. Uh, I did. Uh, I didn't do much gaming, but I did a lot of golfing, which at the moment is like my perfect thing to do because I've been wanting to get back out of the course again for the last eight weeks or however long we won't be able to play. And now I'm able to do it, I am making the most of it. My week is chock-a-blocked with golf in action after we do the scoop each and every week at 10 a.m. Just thought I'd let you know. Yeah. And then Monday, Monday Wednesday, Friday, we, you know, we do Masters of the League. But a uh, small plug there. But yeah, my week is chock a block and filled out with now going playing golf, either with my wife, because she's got, she's got into it. Her golf membership was free, by the way, um, because as golf and societies go, they tend to be very sexist and don't, like young people so uh, my particular golf club decided that they want women women to come and play and they'll give out free memberships and then they reduce the memberships for the young adults like myself so we managed to get very good deals on resigning again nice nice you see that's 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 good because it's uh i mean it's a step towards equality it's still not equal obviously because women free but getting people uh, that aren't of the key demographic, the core demographic, that that old middle-aged white male sort yeah. of thing, by bringing younger people in, by bringing in uh, opposite sex uh, or, or not sex. I mean, I don't want to get into the sex conversation because uh, that's a very deep hole to fall down. But yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice to see that they're actually doing that. Plus, uh, well, that's it. like everybody who have come across on the golf course, regardless of their age uh, and gender, they're really really nice like they'll, they'll take the time out to have a chat with you and ask you like what your name is because a lot of the people we haven't seen there before do you, like, we've been going around. Do you often yeah. come across people on the golf course all the time mate all the time especially when i'm banging birdies <laughs> <laughs> oh what a, what a morning welcome <laughs> to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream reports camaldino good morning oh i love uh how's all your ice cream reports prizes by the way uh do, are you just uh, tuning in just to see if you can bag some more? Uh, good uh, morning. How was your weekend? Uh, mine was decent. Uh, got a bit of mooching in. Um, similar sort of thing to you with the golf. Uh, I was chatting about it yesterday on uh, the PUBG stream. Um, been doing some walking to try and get some calories burnt because I keep eating like like I'm a like I'm an absolute fat burning metabolic monster but it's just it's, <laughs> the rock and cheat day yeah exactly but <laughs> but it's not the case uh so slowly I, I mean i'm turning from the rock into like the rocky outcrop that's what it's more yeah. like <laughs> you're gonna turn, you're gonna try and turn into the rock but really you're the boulder <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> don't, don't don't move out the way i'm rolling down a hill uh yeah it's, it's not pretty but so yeah doing, doing a bit of mooching i mean i did eat some decent shit i had some uh, homemade southern style i keep saying it i was sent on stream yesterday kfc is the easiest way to say it we made kfc at home it wasn't kfc it was it was like more like southern fried Amer southern american inspired over over seasoned spectacular chicken um that daniel absolutely smashed it uh so i was saying yesterday we bought all of like the the uh, well we had all of the spices and stuff in anyway but we bought proper buttermilk to uh to baste it in some some nut oil to yeah. cook it in and everything it was classic it was classic, it was classic southern style gravy as well because obviously um so Why yeah not? That and then beyond that, it was uh, pretty much business as usual. Some Warzone on Saturday, some PUBG yesterday, out, bit my cheek on stream. Uh, same old, same old, nice chill weekend. Watched the Divergent, uh, Divergent, the Divergent, the first film in the Divergent series last night, which was okay. Uh, and then mm. proceeded to look to see how many films are left. There's two more, um, which get apparently increasingly worse, but it's fine. I'm committed now. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Roll you in. God damn it. God damn it. Uh, so yeah, I'll let you know tomorrow how Insurgent gets on. Divergent was a nice, easy watch. Insurgent, uh, looking at the film scores, 
like on Rotten Tomatoes, Divergent got like a 48%, which is four out, four, 5 out of 10-ish. That's all right for me. Uh, the next one was like a 3 out of 10. And then the uh, the last one is 12%. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, God. Just over 1 out oh. of 10. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's... <laughs> to be fair, I watched The Gentleman last night and me and Samantha was creasing, laughing. It's brilliant. It's proper, proper Guy Ritchie film. Like, it, it's... If you love Snatch, you love that, the lock, stock, and things like that. And, I mean, I know that sounded a bit rude if you like, love a bit of Snatch, but if you like that type of film, um, rock and roll of those types of film, you will piss yourself at it. Yeah, I'm partial to a bit of Snatch, to be fair. Moving on, moving on swiftly. <laughs> morning, Rise. Rise. Good morning. Yes, there will be more PUBG this week uh, at some point. We've got to plan it in. But today we are live with the scoop. Um, obviously like we are every day um then we're going to jump into masters of the league our modded master league on pc um and then we usually do that monday wednesday friday we're moving to monday thursday friday this week though uh because i have plans on the wednesday uh, so monday thursday friday for that and then in and amongst that maybe some evening bits I might jump on with some pubg stuff too so yeah if you want to see more of that then yeah keep your eyes out uh Camaldino says my icu prizes are sitting next to my small collection of pez promotional items hope you both had a good weekend yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. enjoy thank you very much again one once again for tuning in and being lucky in both uh of those invitationals so much appreciated much appreciated uh did we do any giveaway stuff for the first invitation i can't remember or was it just yes we did them for all I can't remember. There was, there was only stuff, I think there was stuff that we had in the stock cupboard. Um, but the second one was when we started to get um, sponsorship. Ah, when we got Nakon involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. beep, 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 no, that was the third one. Did the I... second one was uh, Konami UK. I can't remember. It's all merging into one. I mean, we'll ask Camel, didn't you? Yeah. He's, got, he's got all the items. He could tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got everything. Uh, Fatma Dave. Come on, Dave. It says, which KFC recipe did you use this morning? Uh, the, the This morning one, or the one from the guy who spent years trying to rip off KFC? Neither. Uh, we used a collection of quite a few to kind of do our own sort of thing. We were reading, like, um, some KFC-ish ones, and then those, like american at-home cooks that have been like yeah yeah i've tried this over years and i've got rid of this and i did that and the other and i'm basically long story short put 10 times the amount of seasoning that you need <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> uh, so we we kind of over seasoned but we probably didn't season uh, season enough so we're going to over over season the next time we come to cook it because you know when you're frying it off all of the spices and stuff it's, that you put in in the um uh based in sort of like dipping what would you call it like like the egg wash but there's buttermilk rather than egg and so on when you when you put it on all that that basically all just like most of it comes off in the frying bit so you need to over season it which is what, what we're going to do but anyway so enough about kfc it's only 11 minute uh, 11 o'clock in the morning seven minutes past 11 we'll be absolutely starving by the time we finish this, the uh, <laughs> masters of the league test. so let's jump into some news and we have a pretty wait for it wait for it Tasty story to begin with, you see, you see. <laughs> I apologise, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry, I'm not sorry. You, you all you all knew this was coming. Anyway, first news story of the day, Epic Game Store will now issue partial refunds if you missed out on a recent discount. That is a sentence and a half. I'm sorry you weren't here for a sale that we did last week and you've bought this thing at full price. Here's a bit of cash. I mean, how good is that? Uh, so this article is written by Emily Gear of VG247 and it says, The Epic Game Store is now issuing partial refunds to users purchasing a full price game that was recently available on discount. Epic Games has yet to officially announce the new addition to their digital storefront, but buyers are already automatically receiving partial refunds for titles that were just available on discount. Studio Mayday co-founder Joshua Boggs was one of the first to notice the change to Epic Game Store's refund policy, tweeting an automated email from the company. The price of the game, S in brackets games, uh, you purchased were recently lowered, so we are issuing partial refunds for the differences, it reads. Um... Epic updated its return policy in the Epic Game Store earlier this year to ref uh, this year to reflect policies already available on other storefronts. Its return policy now allows unlimited refunds within a two-week period from purchase and with under two hours played. Prior to this, it was limited to two refunds. Uh, 
to year per year i guess that's supposed to say uh the digital store recently became a harbinger of chaos following last week's release of gta 5 which is free until may the 21st as part of the epic game store mega sale gta 5 and gta uh, gta online are now experiencing outages oh my god now experiencing outages due to extremely high player volumes got there in the end um but yeah that's that's huge um so let's read Joshua Boggs' tweet. Whoa, whoa, what? I've clearly been around for too long because I find this refund for a discount I missed on the Epic Games Store absolutely mind-blowingly generous. This is incredible. Uh, so there you go. There's the tweet that we um, already read. Uh, the message that was already read out within the article book. Thoughts, Biberino? I mean, I, I've... I, <laughs> they don't have to do this. Like, it's going to save people money along the lines. Uh, I'll... Sorry, that it's going to save them money somewhere down the line, but they don't have to do this. How many times have you bought a game um, on PSN or Steam or whatever it may be, and then find out that it's in the sale like two or three days later, and then you're absolutely livid about it, especially when it's a game that maybe sometimes gets discounted heavily? Uh, for instance, Grand Theft Auto, we'll use that as an example. So, more often than not, you'll find that game at £25. And regardless of what console, so maybe not the Xbox 360 and the PS3, but it'd be like 25 pound, and then next the next week it might be a tenner or something like that. Um, so they'd frequently change their prices and put them on sale. But knowing my luck, when I go to buy it, it will be a full price. And then this comes out, and then you absolutely live it. <laughs> but <laughs> so, uh, Epic Store are doing everything right to try and look after their customers, and. Uh, we, we talked about this just before we went live and you were saying uh, that it, it's it's weird that people want everyone to have the same launcher like the logic for some gamers to just want one store one store for like when you switch on the playstation you've only got the psn store i love the fact that i've got multiple launchers because i know that epic game store are always going to give me free games but now they're going to give me the best price um well they're going to give me some money back if for instance they put a game on sale after i bought it after a certain amount of time it's about looking after your customers, uh, first and foremost. That's why most people will do shop at three or four different places. They won't just shop at Aldi. They'll shop at uh, Morrison's for some things and then Asda for some things and then go to Aldi to find some things because they know they're going to get a better price for their stuff there. You just It's all about shopping around and looking after your customers. And in some respects, Epic now are doing the best thing about it. Like Steam has always got stuff on sale and they're always cutting down the prices of their items. But I haven't come across them doing something like this where they're going to look after you after the fact you bought something a bit of aftercare there's not many there's not many places in the world never mind video gaming companies that will do that kind of aftercare for you so bear with me one second i'm uh just trying to sort out my mic shit my stream deck's just decided to go ah your mic and stuff yeah we're gonna we're gonna pair that somewhere completely different it's fine <laughs> uh, is it do you say it's a stream deck again yeah, there is an update to Stream Deck that's just flashed up then, and there's no way I'm updating it whilst we're live on stream. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, the world will just... Oh, wait. If anyone's in the chat, uh, can you please tell me? Obviously, you can hear me now. Yeah, hopefully the mic would have dropped out then. Actually, actually, I don't even need to see... It. Never mind, it's fixed. I fixed it. I fixed it all again. Basically, it just forgot what my sauce was. But yes, uh, no, I completely agree. Epic, um, they're absolutely nailing the messaging. I mean, the the cynic inside me says, yeah, but they're uh, they're behind. This is the Xbox scenario that we keep talking about. The second place in the market, so you do take risks. You do rip up the script mm. to get first placed. But these aren't ripping up the script. These are like ripping the script up into tiny little pieces, then drying it out, putting paraffin all over it, a bit of petrol as well, you know, two flammables, why not? And then lobbing it on a bonfire. They're getting rid of the script completely because you can just undercut price and you can you can offer different um, different services and so on. Like Xbox, are obviously, they, they've started to try offer the value um, proposition. So they are saying... Um, Okay, not only do you get games from us on Xbox Games Pass, but we're going to give you uh, games that you can play different. Like we're going to allow you to play on your mobile with XCloud. So uh, yeah. plus we're going to throw in brand new games at launch. Um, 
So not only are you getting games, you're getting multiple games, you're getting it at a really cheap price, and we're giving you different things, we're allowing you to play in different places, so that's huge. They're changing the game there, literally, um, by allowing you to play different things, get games that you probably wouldn't even try, get games that you would try. PUBG, when, as soon as they launched Game Pass, PUBG, day one, boom, in there. If I hadn't had it already on the Xbox, I'd have been like, okay, maybe, maybe I'm jumping in now. Um, and then forza first day day one boom gears five first day day one boom all straight onto game pass so wonderful so epic game store okay we're launching a store yes we're behind with our returns policy and so on so we'll update that we'll, we'll put it in line with the industry um uh yes our store has a number of smaller functions and stuff that all that stores don't have that you kind of take for granted we'll slowly add them and stuff okay fine they started doing that they started getting up to to pace with everything else but now they're at the point where the best-selling game of pretty much ever it's not really obviously technically it's not but i mean you you go back the last 10 years and probably the best-selling game or at least the most ever present game in any chart will be grand theft auto 5 mm -hmm. okay you can have it free we'll, we'll pay we'll pay to get that so you we could just give it out to each and every single person that has it free all you need to do is just sign up to the epic game store also if you um enable two-factor authentication so basically we're giving you free stuff all you need is an account and if you make sure your account is secure uh, we'll give you extra free stuff as well. So have, have these other free games as we go. That's huge. That's huge there. And then, and then, just that's fine. You can see the logic in that. They, that's a loss leader. They've spent a money. Uh, they sp they spent their money on GTA and other free games uh, to get you to create an account. They they that for the. I mean, it's, it's basic marketing. I, I apologize if I'm talking to the uh, converted, but a loss leader is you throw money away. That's the loss that leads your marketing campaign. You're essentially giving away money to get people in and then you make the money up later on. That's what they've done there. So, okay, you've got your loss leader. Um, the other three game, uh, free games, okay, that's, that's that's another loss leader. And then they've gone, actually, do you know what? You, you've got the free games, but do you know that other game that you've just purchased? That was actually on sale last week before you had an Epic Games account. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Here's another fiver. It's like, that's another loss leader. I mean, they've either got... A, a broken uh, marketing method uh, and the whole business will go down very very quickly because they just keep giving <laughs> away all the money or they ha they have so much money that we can share it essentially they're going okay well we've got insane profits everywhere so why don't we share more of that profit with our user base rather than just creating a platform that earns us billions week yeah. in week out why don't we earn multiple millions or less billions uh, and you all uh, save a bit of money and you all have reasons to keep using our platform and yet wh whether that continues so the cynic in me the bit that I started off with it is is it just a marketing thing because what it looks like it looks like they care and that's that's the yeah. thing is like if they suddenly go okay we've actually just surpassed steam in number of users now so all of those refund bits yeah we'll stop that uh these big sales where we give away games for free yeah we're going to stop that uh so so that's when that's what i'm saying the second place bit do they really care about their users? Are they really creating things? I mean, benefit of the doubt. Yes, they do. From from what I can see, I'm a, I wasn't a big fan of the Epic Games Store at first. From that one simple perspective of, I've only just recently, I say recently, it's a couple of years now, but recently moved to Steam uh, as my place to play on PC, and my only place to play. So do, do I want another place to make it a bit more complex? And then once you get past that, yes, I do. Why would why would I want one place to have yeah. a monopoly over uh, video games? Why would I want them to to define exactly what I can and can't play without any competition from anywhere else that would benefit mm. me? So once you get does that as well, you got Twitch as well, haven't you? That give away free games when you got Twitch Prime. They give you free games, like they'll give you five or six free games a month. Fair enough, they might not be AAA ones, in more, more often than not, but they're still giving away free games. So that's another launcher. Yeah, there we go. I forgot about that one. I've only ever... I always forget that that has games on it as well. I've downloaded, I think, maybe two games on it. Um, one of them was, like, the Stranger Things game when that came out yeah. months and months ago, and then I don't think... I've uh, No, I've got it downloaded and installed, but never actually played it. It looked decent, though. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Jess may have streamed it on this channel, actually. I think she when did. When it first came out. Yeah, I think she did. I think that's what made me aware of it because I completely didn't even realise that they were doing games until I was like, oh, fuck, I don't even know. I'm a Twitch partner. I don't know. I'm literally sat here with a hat on that says Twitch on it and I have no idea. <laughs> um, 
Camaldinho says, very generous. It wouldn't be the first time Epic lead the way, just like when they added the creator code for, Fortnite, uh, for creators in Fortnite. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing. Like, creator code. Let me... Like, do you know, I'm going to be harsh. Apologies to EA, just because they are so successful. They're probably closest to it that I can think of. Think of a game that has continued service where you can invest money to buy new items for your playing. So Fortnite, you invest money to buy skins and so on. FIFA is obviously the natural one I'm going to have been from a world of video games. Huge, like Fortnite, takes over uh, the market year-round, essentially. It, could, it, it wouldn't be surprising for FIFA to be number one in the charts in September and at Christmas and in March and wherever. FIFA mm. will always be there or thereabouts, just like Fortnite could be. Obviously not in number of sales because Fortnite's free. But... Um, would you have ever expected, I mean it hasn't yet, but would you ever expect FIFA to go, oh you're buying shitloads of FIFA points, uh, or coins, or whichever ones you buy. Um, do you know what, um, yeah okay, well if you just add code ICU, then Ice Cream Uploads will get a 5% kickback. Nobody would ever expect that from someone like that, but but Epic just just went, yeah okay, well okay, we'll have creator codes. The game's massive, it's everywhere anyway, people are playing it, so let's give money back to the creators. Genius, genius, because it's 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 all about the favour and the goodwill. Because even though people might dislike where Fortnite is going in terms of directions at any one point in time, like I really like Fortnite season uh, chapter one, but by the time it was like season two or three, and they'd re removed parts of the map and they'd added craters and those little rocks that you crunch that make you fly when you jump further and stuff like that, I was like, yeah. it's, it's not for me. It's not for me. Chapter 2, when it all went simple again, yeah, I was involved, yeah, boom. Um, so, yeah, I didn't like what happened, but there's no malice towards them there because you're just thinking, okay, I see what you're doing. It's not for me. I'll come back when it is, but but I can't dislike it. It's like having that, that person that's really, really nice and you think, oh, it's, just, it's just doing something. I don't, you, you don't want to call him a knobhead because you know he's a really nice guy and it's just not for you. So you're like, do you know what? It's all right, you do your stuff, I'll do my stuff. But when it comes to something like EA... The people, I don't know, maybe that's why people are a bit more malicious towards them because there's none of that sort of visual kickbacks as in like, okay, it's not just you give us money for, for stuff within things. It's, it's okay, uh, Fortnite's, okay, you, you want to give us money for, uh, for skins and stuff like that? Okay, well, we'll give bits back and we'll give you free things in game and we'll give you this and, and now we'll give you refunds if you buy stuff on the Epic Game Store. So Epic, as an outward customer... Uh, platform absolutely smash the shit out of PR. Whoever is their PR person needs needs all the all the money. Forget get him a creator code. All her get that PR person a creator code. Because damn. Because damn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yo, Enix, aka Final Yeet, aka all the names. Um, do you know what? AKA we got a win yesterday. You got damn right. Uh, and not to mention the incredible prize money given in their esports tournaments. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the prize money, I. I I'm kind of less open to because I mean there's a couple of reasons for that in terms of the tournament's restricted anyway. Um, a lot of people are going to be watching it, so so it makes sense for them to be looking generous to give stuff away. Plus, the industry has huge prize pools, so is it just a keeping up with the Joneses sort of thing? Um, so so I'm always I'm always dubious with prize money. Is, is it actually reflective of the amount of time and effort and so on that's gone into it, or is it just a like a a hero point? But I get the point. The fact is, I mean, they didn't have to give it away. They could have just gone, "Oh no, it's all about it's all about the entertainment and being the world title holder and stuff like that," um, which annoys me as well. When you get esports that go, "No, it's just about it's about the prestige." It's like, yeah, okay, well, you are televising this and you've signed exclusive deals with Sky Sports and so on, but it's just about prestige. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you are literally making a shitload of money. You're not uh, sat there counting your prestige after the tournament, are you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean, all good points. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not when it comes to something like Fortnite. That's not a pure esport. I'm always dubious with the, with the cash money. Is is that is that a headline, or is that something that there's a reasoning for it? But I mean, it was there. It's there, so it's better off being there than not. So my point, kind of in that sense, is is invalid. Rise says EA will never do that, but if they did, the FIFA community would grow immensely. So many small creators would be able to go full time and grow their audience. EA. Just won't do it because at the end of the day, that with thousands of pounds taken away from the billions they make a year. That's the thing, though. Is I'd be interested to see, and we'll never really know because I doubt that Epic will share their metrics. But if you have that sort of kickback, 
like you instantly lose thousands but it's, it's it's the long tail investment then by giving that money back you're reinvesting into your community if you reinvest into your community there's more uh it's, it's like well the economics of it at first there's more cash at play if you give people cash they have more cash to spend they're more likely to spend more um that's essentially how the economy and uh, stuff works generally but then there's the sentiment value of it as well it's like okay well i don't feel like i'm throwing my money away into a, an empty chasm i feel like i'm investing in a company that's also investing in me so i don't have a problem investing more um so yes you will lose thousands on paper but the potential to earn thousands back is also there if done properly right. and that's the thing i reckon Eki, 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 yeah. epic epic have seen that so they understand that that by giving back people are more likely to invest and potentially go even further so you give them a fiver back they might then spend a tenner on a game uh kind of thing so it's like okay well we're losing speculate to accumulate sort of thing and i think epic games have, have clearly they've got some data on that because they're doing this very very well ea obviously haven't so they won't have the data so you may see that i mean it often often the blind lead the blind and and those with sight often follow those with sight as well so i mean ea might go okay well we'll, we'll try it a little bit on something somewhere and then soon enough they may start to go down the route because it all, it takes all it takes is one company to make a change uh to be brave enough to make that change and then the industry demands the industry expects look at look at fortnite once again epic adding um cross play in their games now every every game that's coming out has cross play and that's what mm. epic they've they made the change they made playstation make the change forget other games companies first parties so i mean that's that's we're not even mentioned that so do, do you know what? GG Epic. GG. You do you. You do Changing you. the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Bib, tell us about stuff while I blow my nose. <laughs> <laughs> so all the stuff in the world. Uh, well, i seen... It was that mentioned about creator codes. Cam said about the creator codes. Ima imagine if EA was to do something like that, though, because the creator codes obviously help out people, uh, streamers or content creators, uh, if people was to buy a skin pack or something like that in, for uh, in Fortnite and they get a small kickback down the line. Imagine if that, that kind of thing was in EA's hands for people to buy packs, but then put their favorite content creators code in to get a kickback from them. Do you think that that would ever work? What? Do you think they'd lose too much money? What, but by... Do you more pack, packs get more packs get bought than skins? Um... Because hmm. the skins are more expensive, obviously. Then the packs, because uh, it is one pack like seventy nine p or something like that. And if you was to buy a, a load of FIFA points, you may end up spending fifty or sixty quid or something like that over a certain amount of time. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if more. I think EA probably earn more off Ultimate Team than the the. the I don't know. That's a real. It's, it's, it's a, a difficult quite, question. I, I a, yeah. I would say probably. Um, and I'm only saying this because of my bias towards football content creators, and I don't know to the extent of uh, um, uh, Fortnite content creators and the Fortnite community. One for one FIFA creator could spend tens of thousands easily, probably even maybe even six figures possibly over the course of a year, because speculate to accumulate that money gets them the content, the content gets them the viewers, gets them the the donations, the subscribers, the the whatever. So that money they earn back from spending it. So that's five, maybe six figure sums. Definitely, definitely five, maybe six. Um, uh, whereas Fortnite, one person won't spend that much. I mean, Jordan, mm. Jordan will spend 17 grand or whatever it was that he spent on Fortnite. But one person won't spend that much generally. Um, and you might, yeah, there will be some ex exceptions to the, to the rule. But generally, one person won't spend that much. So there's... You probably get more um, what they call cash whales or whatever in FIFA, but you will you will get a, a bigger spread. There's probably more spending in Fortnite just because of the amount of users Fortnite yeah. uh, has. Yeah, well, that's what had. I was thinking. Yeah, that, so that was that was the, that was the pros and cons. That was the, that was what I was weighing up. Obviously, more people play Fortnite, but they may only buy one skin pack for fifteen quid. That may be a month, but when it's a lightning round or an SBC or whatever goes on on the FIFA side of things. If you if it, if those big campaigns were coming up, you could probably spend way more than that opening packs. I don't know how it works anymore on FIFA because I but back back in day you used back to be able to day. buy 
like coin traders and stuff like that, didn't you? So you'd spend six quid or something and get four hundred thousand coins or something like that. Um, so I don't know what the pros and cons. I don't know how that works on that side of things anymore. But I, I don't know how much they would lose. I mean, it's it's definitely something that I imagine they would have looked at. Yeah, I reckon. Great pros in there. I reckon so. I mean, it, it like like Rise says. It, I think it could be big for sustaining the bottom end of the community. However, um, do they need that? Their community mm. is massive. They have content creators spending five-figure sums that are propping up the industry. Um, those content creators are leading smaller content creators to 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 grind harder to spend uh, or to people are. That's why you start to see uh, loads of RTGs and stuff because people want to progress without spending money. Because not not only because it saves them money as content creators, but because there are people that just don't have the money to spend. And people want some people want to see someone get the. Uh, the feeling that that exhilaration from from signing ninety nine red Messi kind of thing in your team, um, but they know that they don't have the money for that, so they're happy enough to watch a creator for that. Whereas other people will be like, okay, I want to see someone create content that is relevant to me because I'm never gonna get ninety nine red Messi. I understand that, so I want to see someone make a team from nothing and get himself to a good team because that's the only way I'm going to get there. I'm not going to invest 200 quid or start off with 80 mm. quid's worth of coins or whatever. Um, so that's why you, you do see a lot of that stuff. And you're like, okay, well, I get it, I get it, but, uh, but we're already earning enough. And and then that then comes to the... I mean, it's it's all right us standing in our soapbox saying Epic are leading the way, EA uh, are being greedy, but EA also have a very comfortable business model that's put them at the top of world video games uh, in terms of something's extremely profitable year in, year out with repetitive purchases. It's not just like, a boom, it's out! And uh, the, yeah. game, the game's three weeks old and I'm not, not bothered. It's like, okay, match day one, match day two. There's not even any football at the moment, but we're still making you spend on team of the season <laughs> and stuff like that. And it's like, it works for them. So the, the devil's advocate position is, okay, I get... There is, a, there is a way for us to be more inclusive to the community here, but we're also earning shitloads and supporting the community as it is. So why should we change? Which I, under, I understand that as well. Uh, myself, as an idealist that's not in there with the money in my hand, it's easy to be it's easy to be frivolous with someone else's money, which is what I'm the position that I'm probably in. I would say, okay, we'll give more back. Give more back. Look at what Epic's doing and, and go down that route. But like I say, it's not my money, so it's easy to say that when I'm not the one holding that cash and, and have it to lose. Can you imagine? Can you imagine someone like Castro having a supporter code? Like the amount of people that watch his streams and then would be using his content creator code. He would never have to spend a penny of his own money again opening packs because the community would be doing it for him. Well, it's pretty much in that position anyway with donations, but it would be yeah. another version of that. Uh, and that's what you see with. I mean, look at Ninja. He gets a creator code and he has. Oh well, he doesn't anymore. But he had more viewers than Castro. We mix up. Uh, so he... we had more viewers than Ninja <laughs> when I'm, I'm, I say episode one of our Masters of the League. Do you know what I mean? We had like four times the amount of viewers than Ninja. It let that sink in. We had, we we had more viewers than Doctor Disrespect for about five seconds, but we still did. <laughs> as his as his time has ticked down from four minutes, we had more viewers than him at the start of his four minute countdown. Yeah, by, by the time his countdown finished, he had like ten times the amount of viewers that we had. But still, but still. <laughs> Uh, uh, Camaldino, I'm off the supermarket. Apologies, can't stay longer. Enjoy the rest of the day. No worries, dude. Thank you for dropping in. Uh, Thank me, you, mate. Pick me up some uh, carrots if you, you know, need a new few. And some uh, uh, chocolate pop tarts for bibs. You got damn right. Uh, red pendejo. <laughs> does that does that mean red prick? <laughs> red penis? Uh, thank you very much for the follow, Mr. Red Pendejo. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Grave does this all you? No worries. <laughs> I'm just reading out the name, Red Pendejo. I'm sure a pendejo is 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 like prick. So you call if you call someone a pendejo, it's a prick. It's a it's a. But anyway, imagine it's, a, it's an amazing name, Red Penis. <laughs> I mean, like, maybe maybe I'm wrong, <laughs> but let me know. <laughs> like, just called you a red prick. I like, mean, I get that all the time. But... <laughs> no, you get blue prick. I'm the one that's the red prick. <laughs> Uh, the, the thing is, especially over lightning rounds, the amount of people uh, put on the smaller creators would be getting hundreds of pounds on your favorite streamer and then spending the points. Absolutely. I mean, complete, I'm I'm completely on board with that. But like I say, it's easy for us, playing devil's advocate, it's easy for us because it's not our money to spend. Um, you've got a feel that if it's working for someone like Epic, that maybe it's, maybe it's the right move. But like I say, our Epic loss leading, is this something that they can sustain without earning elsewhere? Um, uh, for all of you deaf listeners, uh, 
well, well, are you listening? If it's Steph, I was going to say Bibby's just done, just screamed into the microphone that he was actually yawning. But, <laughs> but you won't be hearing me say this anyway, so it's fine. If you're a deaf listener, then <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> Moving on! Uh, yeah, you've got to feel that Epic kind of know what they're doing with it. But like I say, it could be a loss lead. It might not be a sustainable business plan. And, and it could just be that Epic are using Fortnite sales to prop up this elsewhere. So, yeah, we don't know. I mean... I would like to see more of what Epic have been doing. I think we all would. I think that's kind of uh, a no-brainer, really. We all would like to see more of that. I have no shame in saying this, but I've sent, uh, spent 3.5k this FIFA. I alone would help you keep uh, the stream up. So if you had multiple people using the code, uh, you'd be more incentivized to, one, play the game, two, stream often, three, actually give comfort in knowing you don't have to worry. 100%. I mean, there's nothing wrong with spending 3.5k at all. People will wince, and I do I do take the mick out of Jordan for spending, what was it, 17k, I said, on Fortnite. It was uh, it, because it's one of those things, but it's that's flawed. That's an old, outdated, archaic way of looking at things. Just in the same way that people will wince if you spent seven ninety nine on on coins or whatever from the PS store. It doesn't matter. It's it's kind of irrelevant. Um, I'm telling it to you, isn't it? If that's how you get your if that's how you get your entertainment in opening packs, then that's your choice. What you want to do with your own money? Who's who? Who am I or anybody else to tell you otherwise? I mean, how, uh, and this this is even flawed. It's irrelevant because it's completely subjective. But how many minutes have you had out of that? Um, how many hours have you had out of that? 3.5K. Um, you've, you've probably had multiple hours this week. We're probably talking thousands of hours that you've had in this game already, potentially, or could be by the end of it. 3.5K is not that much. When, you, when you're spending £20 an hour-ish, well, about 15, 10 to 15 pounds an hour-ish to go to the cinema. That's the one that I always use as my barometer. If I, if I can spend 20 quid for two hours at the cinema, we're talking 10 pound an hour, that's it. Um, and then if the missus is coming along as well to, to enjoy it with me, we're talking, okay, it's 20 pound an hour. And then we need some popcorn and there's a Starbucks there, so I'm not gonna grab a flat white and a, 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 one of those Bakewell tarty sort of like raspberry and almond bakes. Of course I'm gonna get one of those. She needs some as well too. So we're looking at 50 quid, 25 quid an hour. Uh, because we're there for two hours, twenty-five quid an hour for us to to have that experience. That's that's a high amount of money. Video games hardly ever get to that point. Even when you've got to the point of three point five k, you're probably still breaking into that sort of boundary there. So it's not that worse. Fortnite, I've clocked in hundreds. Lee, ah, okay. Oh, we we're talking overall. Okay, Fortnite hundreds on skins. League have spent eight k, but played uh, since the very first disc version. Clocked over one thousand hours. Yeah, exactly. Uh, eight pound an hour. So y'all, that's less than a cinema ticket. Job done. Uh, completely. So it's a high sum, but if it's a sum that you're comfortable spending and you can afford, then then everyone's opinion is irrelevant. If you if you want to spend it and can afford to spend it, then spend it. Just in the same way that I've spent a shitload of burgers. Doesn't matter. Do did I need them? Not really. Uh, but but I did. But anyway, 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 let's move forward. Talking about spending a stupid, stupid amount of money. Babe, what what what's what what's your all time favorite game series? Would you say? Or one of them? Uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there's this, there's the the one that I don't mention very often. I know for for you long standing listeners probably don't know this, but uh, I do talk about Resident Evil quite a lot, so that could definitely be up there. Resident Evil Three Remake Team confirms it made changes to Link to Resident Evil Four. Nice segue there, Bev GG. Uh, this is written by Andy Robinson for VGC, and it says VGC previously revealed that a Resident Evil Four remake is in development. Uh, so let's jump to the article. The Resident Evil 3 remake development team has revealed it made changes to the game specifically to link it to sequel Resident Evil 4. In a new interview with the PlayStation blog, interview answers credited to the development team claim that the original design of Resident Evil 3's nemesis... Whoop. Uh, whoop. My... What was it? Oh, it was my, uh, my WhatsApp is dingling. I thought it was like Dropbox or something, but it's gone now. Um... Yeah, in a new interview of the PlayStation blog, interview answers credited to the development team claim that the original design of Resident Evil 3's Nemesis was changed to better place him with the series timeline. Zombies infected by Nemesis with parasites were deliberately made visually similar to the play Plagas, Plagas? Plagas infected Ganados in order to connect with uh, Resident Evil 3 with Resident Evil 4, the development team said. We inevitably decided on Nemesis' final ability due to the presence of, is it Ganado? In Resident Evil 4, 
Nice bit. <laughs> good, good input. <laughs> so you keep on chopping up, so I'm, I'm waiting to... I, I, I have no idea if you're still talking now, so I could be completely putting you up here. <laughs> I was asking, uh, is it Ganado? 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 Ganados. Okay. Uh, we inevitably decided on Nemesis' final ability due to the presence of Ganado in Resident Evil 4, the interview reads, referring to Resident Evil 4's humanoid enemies. Ganado are humanoid enemies that are created through being infected with the Plagas Parasite, the, the original basis... For NEA? Okay, this means no to me. The team added, we wanted NEA-infected enemies to be visually similar to the Plagues infected Ganados as, as a means for fans to piece together how Nemesis fits within the whole Resident Evil franchise. The changes p potentially represent a significant retcon to Resident Evil storyline, as in the original... Uh, as in the original... Oh my god. As in the original Resident Evil 4, the Umbrella Corporation is still investing, uh, investigating the Plagues. Is it the Plagues? Plagues? The Plagueis. Plagueis, okay. Resident Evil 4 sees Umbrella, Umbrella agent Ada Wong dispatched to obtain as much information as possible about Plagueis uh, and attempt to secure a sample. The news further adds further credence to a VGC report revealing that Capcom is working on a Resident Evil 4 remake. Uh, the, the project is in development at Osaka-based M2, the new studio found by former Platinum Games... Uh, head Tatsuya Minami, which has been preparing for its development since 2018. Development sources told VGC earlier this year. According to noted insider Dusk Golem, who also confirmed VGC's report, Resident Evil 4 has a larger development team than the series' previous two remakes, including support from Capcom's internal Resident Evil 2 and Devil May Cry 5 teams. Uh, many original Resident Evil 4 developers remain among these teams, VGC understands, including producer Hir Hiroyuki Kobayashi, who recently worked on Mega Man 11, and designer Kuji Kak who recently worked on Devil May Cry 5. Resident Evil 4's original lead coder, Kiyoko Sakata, was the game director for the Resident Evil 3 remake via his company Redworks. However, a person with knowledge of Resident Evil 4's development told VGC the remake is being directed by a newcomer at M2. Gone to another report, Resident Evil 8 will release on current and next-gen consoles in 2021. Like Resident Evil 7, the 2021 game will feature a first-person perspective and returning protagonist Ethan Winters. Uh, absolutely butchered reading that, but thoughts, Pip? Uh, well, first of all, I'm just going to look at Asim's comment and just potentially have time him out for about 14 hours or two days. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you which one to do, but uh, I see, who was it? Rise said that Resident Evil 4 was one of the best between that and 6. Hmm. <laughs> because they're two I th of my least favourite. I gotta say, I think Bibi really likes those games. <laughs> <laughs> they're two of my least favourite. Like Resident, I've said it so many times today before, but Resident Evil 4, as much as a good game it is, it doesn't feel like a Resident Evil game. I can't go into this again because we are literally just chewing up time here and I will be here for hours and hours going through this. But Resident Evil 4, for me, it was a good game. Resident Evil 5 was the absolute start of the decline in the series. Resident Evil 6, I don't even want to talk about. The only time that game is fun is when you're playing it two-player. And again, that is still boring. Um, and then it brought it back to Resident Evil 7. But I'm glad that Resident Evil 4 is getting a remake. But my God, they should have done Code Veronica first. Code Veronica should have been next in line for all this treatment. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm still glad that the it's interesting that they've they've put the fundamentals of three, uh, sorry four in three. So they tested some of the waters and what they can achieve with Resident Evil Three by putting the stuff in there that made make it easier for them to be able to program in Resident Evil Four. I hope they make Resident Evil Four darker because it was it was a light game. Like Resident Evil Universe is a dark atmospheric place whereas resident evil 4 you start off in the village it's it's not even it, it doesn't feel like it's nighttime it just feels like a bit it feels a little bit dark but it's not dark enough like i'm, I'm interested to see what they're going to do with this because i hope it's just not a remaster and it's a complete remake like they've done with the other ones not just for my sake because i've completed resident evil 4 so many times i want to feel something different but for everybody else who may be picking this up for the first first time that like they've done with resident evil 2 and 3 this one, I think, should push the boat out and change a few things about it. So, I'm interested to see where they end up with this one. But, yeah, Resident Evil 4, for me, is definitely down the pecking order. Interesting. I think Bibi and Raya should go outside and have a fight. It's fine. It's fine. We'll watch, we'll watch. <laughs> Resident Evil Outbreak, that would have been fantastic as well. 
uh, if they could have done that because they started. It looks like they tried to do it with resistance, and I have only played the beta of that. I've not even played the the full version of it. Whether or not it's out, I don't know. It, my interest in Resident Evil Resistance was pretty low to begin with, um, but if they could have done a Resident Evil Outbreak where you could play with four of your friends and then you just do what you did in the PlayStation Two version, that would be amazing. But that looks like that's never going to uh, uh, come come to fruition. Uh, Asim says two is the best, four is good, just not pure survival horror. Six was an abomination. If they remake yep. that village opening of four with a more survival horror type twist, my god, that could be insanely good. That that's essentially what I was I was going down the route of like I love the opening segment of that game, but it's just not a survival horror game. It's an action game. That's where the the, the, the pendulum change it, it shifted direction from a survival horror game to what we now see as the the, the worst era for Resident Evil in my eyes anyway, because it was you could find bullets wherever you went. You had to the inventory. You could hold up a stupid amount of things. Um, health left, right, and center. It was it was too action for my liking there was no survival element to it i mean fair enough resident evil 3 there was towards the end the amount of bullets that you ended up picking up was stupid really because you never would have got that much in the original but yeah it's it's interesting to see the direction that they're going with this and i hope that they put the survival horror element back in resident evil 4 because that would be an absolute game changer and resident evil 4 the original one would be completely irrelevant to me then i only play that now because it's part of the the timeline um, so if they could change that up and make it a survival horror game, like I want to feel at no point during Resident Evil 4 did I think I shit myself, like it just wasn't scary, but I want to feel scared when I play a Resident Evil game, which is why the first three are so iconic to me and especially the remakes of 2 and 3 both amazing games, 3 was a little bit short um, but it, it hit every note that I, that I wanted barring the clock tower which I think everybody ended up picking up on but we'll see we'll see uh, <coughs> Bibi you should have a stream sometime this week on Just Chatting where we waffle for hours and debate about Resident Evil, says Rise in the chat. <laughs> Listen, there isn't enough hours in the day for me to be able to go through <laughs> and talk about Resident Evil. It'll have to be, we'll have to take each day as a Resident Evil day, so out of the seven days we'll go through all of Resident Evil games. Not even not even including the spin-offs. We're talking Resi 1 on Monday. <laughs> Resi 2 on Tuesday. Uh, sorry, Craig David. I apologize for butchering that song. Sorry for everyone listening. I apologize. I've let us all down there. Uh, right, says I also do agree. Health and ammo needs to be massively more scarce, and they need to add proper heart racing moments. That's that's kind of yeah. the thing for me. I mean, I've Res Resi Cart. What? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Resi Cart, as in like Mario Kart. <laughs> is is that a thing? <laughs> Just imagine. Uh, that would be a great spin-off. Uh, Nintendo Banhammer inbound. Pow. <laughs> Uh, what do we think then about uh, final point on this one before we move on what do we think then about the fact that they've come out and said yeah we've actively tweaked Resident Evil 3 to fit that into the timeline is that just a general comment of saying we think it, we think it just sits better in, in the timeline or do we think that is mm. uh, fuck I may have said inadvertently that we've tied this so the next game that will follow that hasn't been announced uh has been essentially announced uh, obviously they can't say anything about it officially until the official announcement because of all sorts of fucking internal things and then there's probably yeah. financial implications when it comes to stocks and shares and all that sort of shit um but is this uh them just saying oh we wanted it to fit into the into the resident evil ecosystem something just float past your camera then <laughs> no I'm, I'm about to show three of the resident evil games that you probably never played before but um, I'm such a fucking nerd. Well, it's not Resident Evil game. 2 Remake, so yeah, pick any three, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you've still got my copy. I've still got your Jedi Fallen Order, but these three Resident Evil games, I don't know if I can fit them all right. three on the camera, but Resident Evil Gun Survivor 1 on the PlayStation 1, Resident Evil Gun Survivor 2 on the PlayStation 2, and Resident Evil Dead Aim on the PlayStation 2 as well. Um, these are abominations of games. Um, never play these unless you're an absolute super fan of these. Um, Dead Aim was probably the best out of them, but yeah. maybe saying these are abominations okay. of games. Never play these. Enix says, "I love Dead Aim and Survivor. <laughs> I had them all." <laughs> no, these are fucking awful. Like Resident Evil, that Resident Evil you can't save. Like you just have to play it in one go. Um, shit. I mean, I, did, I never played it with a light gun, so that probably would have made it a little bit more bearable. But see, that's a that's a PS One game made with like SNES mindset of like Sonic. You just play through the game and you don't save. Yeah, 
Uh, this one was over. This one, Code Veronica Resident. Well, this was Resident Evil Gun Survivor 2, but it was based around the Code Veronica game. Um, so that was okay-ish. It was like a. It's a first-person game. Like you just see the floating gun. That's pretty much what it is, and you just go through, and it'll give you tasks to do. Um, but it wasn't a survival horror game by any stretch of the imagination. Again, if it did support, yeah, it does. It does support the gun control. You know the light gun. Um, and again, Resident Evil Dead Aim, that's probably the best story out of them, but the characters that are in this you never see in the franchise again, so yeah, it's definitely worth picking up if you're a Resident Evil fan, but if you just want to actually play the game, don't bother because they're fucking awful. <laughs> uh, so, back to the question, do we think that that is them just, just saying, oh, we wanted to make it fit in, or do we think that that's, that's, that's a hint towards for it's in the works? I know we've had hints already, yeah. but would it be another hint? Well, that's uh, that's where I was. Uh, I was trying to get my point across before. Uh, I'm very bad with words, as you can tell, in most in more often because I think of a load of things to say, but they never quite come out with God. <laughs> but the fact that they've tried to put Resident Evil elements, Resident Evil Four elements, into three to try and test the waters, that makes me think that they are going to try and change Resident Evil Four up. Which, again, for someone who's a fan of the franchise and played through them a stupid amount of times. That it feel it will feel like a new game to me because Resident Evil Two and Three felt like a new game because they completely changed them up. There some elements missing, some elements included that I never even would have thought would made the cut. So yeah, I, I I do think that they will change it up enough for hardcore fans to get into, and for new fans of the franchise to get in get into the timeline. Oh, big yawn. <clears throat> that's just because you're boring me that bit. Sorry, I'm joking. Yeah, <laughs> not, not <blame> it. <laughs> no, I, I I think that's that that's probably. A big point, but a similar sort of thing off that, and this is one I can't answer, but you probably can, is would changing stuff up like that, so changing stuff in three and four mm. to make them all fit together, you as a tried and tested Resi player, does that piss you off? Is it a case of, mm. like, it's like, think of when you see a, a, a movie remade, or even worse, when you yeah. have a song remade, and then you always go, oh, the original was better. It's just not anything, yeah. and people almost resent it because 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 it's different in video mm. games it's usually more acceptable to change stuff up to make it better but yeah. obviously the hardcore still have their feelings would you be bothered about them changing um nemesis's storyline to tie into four and changing four so that it fits in with two and three and and what might follow as well again it's a very hard question to be able to answer because i know it will piss more people off like that i loved three but they're missing the clock tower out of it which is a huge part of the original one it, that 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 to me felt fundamentally criminal, um, but the the game itself was still good enough. It was still di diverted away from the original quite a lot, but it felt like a fresh story, and it felt like uh, it felt like a brand new Resident Evil game in that timeline, which for me is perfect. Would I like to see them do a one for one, like um, br bringing Resident Evil Two out with modern day graphics, so it's just not. Um, a PlayStation 1 version with like the, the daft polygons and the square heads and stuff like that. Would I like to see them make uh, a, a modern day version of that with the tank controls, with the camera angle still? Absolutely, I would love that. But as to modern day games, because the way that people play games now are completely different than they did 20 years ago. It's just the way it is. I, If you want to play those games again, go back and play them. I rebought them all, obviously, so I can still remain in that universe if I wanted to and I can go back and play them I can play them on an emulator on PC so they'll look fantastic but the way people play games now and they want to sell more and bring in a new audience and still cater for the old one it's a very 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 difficult thing for them to be able to do and so far with the remakes of two and three I feel like they've hit every single note on there again still think it's criminal that they missed out the clock tower in three but if they do that kind of treatment with four you are going to piss people off but I think the majority of people who have been invested in this storyline and the timeline and the franchise for so long will just be happy to be able to go back and revisit some of the key places in this providing that they keep them in again you are going to piss people off it's, it's, it's the way that it is it, you go into any person's walkthrough or review on Resident Evil 2 and 3 and people in the comment section will just be going ballistic because what else have they got to do with their time apart from going to someone's YouTube channel and give them shit for something <laughs> that they've reviewed um, but it's just the way it is. You will piss people off. But the majority of the people, like myself, who may be hardcore fans of the franchise, will still get a massive, massive kick out of going back and re revisiting some of these places again. Same with five. 
five again was pretty much an all day game. Um, so it was didn't have any survival horror elements in there pretty much at all. It was uh, no atmosphere. It was very bland, shall I say? Um, but the co-op part of it was the best part. If they could redo that game and put new elements in there and just make it f make it a bit more survival horror but fun to play with a co-op partner again because Shaver was a f fucking the worst you think of the worst AI you've ever played with in the game and she beats it hands down she is the worst like you could give her the best gun in the game and she'll never fire it so you just take everything off her and just do it yourself <laughs> um, but yeah it's, it's as long as they can make them fun and more survival horror-ish then you're onto a winner as simple as that for me just want to confirm uh for those of you listening as well i know the audio was pretty clear there but i'm going to say it just in case it dropped out um bibi says playing remade resi games gives him a massive massive kick it was kick that he said yes. we know how much he likes the games but it was kick uh, anyway <laughs> anyway so it's not only uh resi that is getting uh, a shitload of playtime as we use that as a nice segue into our next article as hundreds of thousands of us are enjoying playing Daisy since it joined xbox game pass actually before i jump into that you've seen the article you know what we're gonna jump into but let me jump into the comments maybe there was a spin-off uh on the xbox game pass and uh the one mission i remember is being in a prison with shitloads of zombies behind bars and i couldn't get past it because it gave me so much anxiety lol it was resident evil insert name two never been so scared slash anxiety ridden in my life playing a game i'm telling you i still haven't even attempted to go back to it but there you can see on screen let me go off big 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 screen bit uh resident evil 2 revelations there you go yeah that's i think that's the one that you're talking about that is a phenomenal game the first version of that the resident evil revelations one again was a fantastic game this one i'm gonna lend you this one graham so that you can play it with the missus because it's a co-op game and this again it's fantastic. It features uh, the very awesome Barry Burton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the painter and decorator from the Resi Worlds. <laughs> the painter and decorator from Buxton. Oh, no, no. Uh, it, was, it was a double glazing salesman. That's what it was. <laughs> so he's featured heavily in this game. So, yeah, that's a, that's another great game. Uh, and en Enix fan says, Pla uh, played Resi 5 constantly in co-op uh, to complete. But, yeah, was bland. Uh, anyway, back to the news, moving on to the next story. Hundreds of thousands of us are playing uh, Daisy since it joined Xbox Game Pass. It confirms that Daisy still remains an unmatched and unforgettable survival experience. Uh, written by Vicky Blake for Eurogame, the article says, Hundreds of thousands of new players have jumped into Daisy since the survival game joined the Xbox Game Pass library last week. Citing a huge influx of new players, developer Bohemia Interactive says the hardcore survival game is flourishing now more than ever and has become one of the most played games on Xbox. Xbox Game Pass is a great opportunity for us to open the game to a different audience and to let a massive number of new players experience DayZ in all its crude harshness and beauty together with the veterans, said Bohemia Interactive's publishing director. Uh, wow. Wojciech Jeszatko? <laughs> in a press release. Uh, I apologise. If I've killed your name there, I apologise. Over the day, over the years, Daisy has gone through a difficult development, but at Bohemia Interactive, we never lost faith in the game. So seeing its record player numbers across all platforms is a very rewarding moment for the whole team. For us, it also confirms that Daisy still remains an unmatched and unforgettable survival experience. From 7th of May, Xbox Game Pass subscribers have also been able to access Red Dead Redemption 2, which uh, sadly for some replaced GTA 5 on the 14th of May, Final Fantasy IX. Do you know what? I'll leave that there because that's going to talk about what's in Games Pass, but that's not what we need to know. But hundreds of thousands of people enjoying mm. DayZ. In fact, that's very suspicious. I don't... I don't... <laughs> I don't think that that's true. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think that that's true. Uh, hundreds of thousands. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'd love to be able to try and find that out as a fact because... That seems like a, a, a definitely a throwaway comment. Hundreds of thousands of people have watched that are currently playing our game. Um, I am a completely lapsed Daisy player because it went downhill rapidly. Like when it first came out, it felt great, and then they managed to program the zombies to be faster than you and hit you once, and then you die or you fall off a curb, break your ankle, and you fucked them for 25 minutes. Because you, even if you quit out of it, your player still just crawls on the floor. You have to wait for him to completely die. It was just it felt like a broken game. We went to Gamescom, I think it was, uh, and I managed to... No, was it Gamescom? It was either Gamescom or EGX, and I went to the booth to go and play it, and I was speaking to the community managers over there, 
Um, just saying, that obviously, I was a, I was a massive fan back in the day. I want to play because they just brought out a new patch for it. Uh, so there was demo in it there, so I got to play it, and it still felt like the old Daisy. So I haven't installed it since. I may give it go number seven hundred and eighty-four <laughs> and re-download it. Um, but hundreds of thousands, I think that's I think that potentially could be a lie. Uh, Jordan says, to be, to be honest, me and my friend played it, and there is a ton of new servers. I played it since launch, so another player uh, player base has hiked loads. Um, see, I can I can I can agree with this. Hundreds of thousands uh, are are playing DayZ. It's just, what do you mean when you say playing? Because hundreds of thousands of people have just downloaded GTA. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people have just just well, probably millions to be fair. I've just. Uh, purchased GTA and haven't installed it and aren't actively playing it. Maybe hundreds of thousands of people have gone, oh, this is on the, the Game Pass, let's download it and, and give it a try. Are they actively playing it day in, day out? That's the thing. There is no information of what they say. Hundreds of thousands of new players have jumped in. That could be hundreds of thousands of people going, okay, well, I'm paying for my Game Pass subscription and this is free this week. I'm locked down. I've got mm. nothing else to do, so let's try this new game. Turn it on. Oh my god, this is a crock of shit. Turn it off. It could be the exact opposite. It could be people going, ha ha, this is the game I've been waiting for for all my life. Um, but we don't really know. So it could be hundreds of thousands, but it could be, it could be one second plays, just installs, or, or whatever. So we don't know what that number means. Well, I've just got on Git Hype um, that shows you the concurrent players of any one game at any given time. And currently on the PC version of the game, uh, it has 11,000 people played, and the all-time highest peak was 40,000. So, taking these comments and moving them left field so they're out of context, it must mean, for, like, overall, because there is no way hundreds of thousands of people are playing this concurrently. I can't see it. The game isn't good enough to even warrant that. If they've got 11,000 people playing it right now, and the peak is 40,000, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, these hundreds and thousands is across all formats, uh, I believe. It's on PlayStation, it's on PC, it's on Xbox. They're the three platforms. So even if you was to treble these and put them across all three consoles, you wouldn't even get anywhere close to that figure. Well, it's, but, So seeing its record num uh, player numbers across all platforms is a very rewarding moment for the whole team. But that doesn't mean too much when it's a fresh install kind of thing. I mean, there could be more players. If there's 11k people... Uh, playing on steam so there's 11k it's saying hundreds of thousands of people um let's say there's a there's that again on playstation just just say there was uh so then you need to make 80k ish to get to 101 thousand people and then you can go oh hundreds of thousands i mean it is a hundred one hundred but it's still a hundred yeah. so they could they could just break through into a hundred thousand people and then they can say hundreds of thousands of people because that is technically the case it's just it's just saying it and not saying it kind of thing mm. um if they said over two hundred and fifty thousand, or over a quarter of a million so that would let me know that it's 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 under that i'd say it's probably between one and two hundred thousand people which one game getting a peak of that much when it's free essentially it's not free game pass obviously pay for, but it mm. kind of is um that doesn't surprise me w whether they say that again next month uh, what's your, what's your concurrent for the month now? Uh, not quite at the peak. <laughs> so. Well, I'm looking now at this website. I don't know how accurate it is. It, I've literally just typed in current player counts um, for our video games, and Git Hype was one that came up on the top. And concurrently now, playing Counter Strike is 694,000. That to me seems like a genuine number because it's free to play and it's probably one of the most popular games in the world. Behind that is Dota 2, and behind that seems to be play, playing Renon's Battlegrounds with 266,000 play, people playing it. That seems like a that's probably the weirdest number to me that people are playing. I mean, it's still a popular game, but do you think that seems like a... What, 266,000? Yeah, 266,000 people are playing Player Unknown's Battleground at, as we speak. I would, Does that I would. feel like a genuine number? Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's massively propped up by the Asian market, so... The American market and European markets uh, are, do fluctuate, but the Asian market is huge. Uh, right. So that I, I would say, yeah, um, that doesn't surprise me that much. Especially, I mean, what are they counting that as well? Are they counting Light and PUBG main, or is that just... it, it doesn't say. Uh, I wish I knew that because that would obviously make sense as uh, to with the Counter Strike. Oh, so that's the, just the free version. But player and all background, if this is the Light and mobile, including the main game, that would make a lot more sense. But it just says. Uh, Player knows battleground, so I imagine it's just the base game, and not anything else. It's not taking into account any other numbers because this is just for Steam. 
So, uh, playing on Battleground Lite, that, that version isn't anything to do with Steam. You have to get your own PUBG launcher for that. Ah, okay. Um, let's have a quick look. Well, there's, there's 12,000 people watching PUBG on Twitch. Um, and that's usually... There's usually more people playing it than is watching it. So, that wouldn't surprise me. What's, what's CSGO? 600,000, did you say? Uh, just just shot of 700. Uh, and there's 44,000 people. So, that kind of tallies in that respect. Um, so, there's like four times as much people watching CSGO uh, than there is watching PUBG. Um, there's three times as many people playing. So, it, it kind of there or thereabouts. So, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. Mm. Um but yeah, do we think hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people are playing and enjoying Daisy? Uh, not sure. Would hundreds of thousands of people want to? Absolutely. I mean, I I'm saying this from someone that that all I've watched, it's like who watches the watches is like a a Twitch sort of um, uh, a Twitch partner challenge or achievement. That's it on the dashboard in the background. Who watches the watches? That's kind of me. I watch the watches. I've never I've never played Daisy, but I kind of. I, I've seen all the comments for the people who do watch Daisy or do play Daisy or, or whatever, and, and they're all kind of saying the same thing. Love the game. It, when you play it, it surpasses any other game. The That survival element of being in the game, you've got no resources, you have to kind of make everything work to your yeah. advantage. Everyone loves that, but the game just kind of... It was always, always like Neely. It was always Neely. We're, we're going we're gonna to be good, but not, not yet. It's going to be amazing. Uh, but not yet. And I've seen that from uh, chatting with Bib. I've seen that from watching TSM Break, who's a PUBG streamer that I watched that came from Daisy. He went back to Daisy a few months back, and I, I was linking Bib up because him and uh, Sacrio uh, played a, quite a bit of Daisy together. And I was like, I'm just watching a bit of this. Um, and yeah, you're watching it, and I'm thinking, do you know what? This is quite intense. It's not my sort of game. I do like a slow build up of like PUBG, but it's, it's about 30 minutes, whereas this is like four hours later, and you've still not seen anyone. I'm like, oh my god! But, but do you have games pass? No, 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 no. It's run out yeah. now. But I say we we could definitely do this as a duo stream, like Daisy. Just dip back into because I've never played a console version of the game. I've only ever played the PC version. So I'd be interested to find out where these comments of hundreds of thousands uh, people are enjoying it um, comes from because that'll be interesting. So I might re-download it on my Games Pass because I've still got it. I, well, I can I can get the uh, games pass if we're gonna do some of this. So maybe maybe some we'll try, give it a try. But uh, I know seeing Survival Friday. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know seeing the game. It looks like something that I could get into with other people. But yeah, but the issues with watching the streamers that I've seen is like you'll be just playing along. You'll be a million hours into a game, and all of a sudden the server will just die, and it's like well. Mm -hmm. uh, that's everything gone. I, I was, I've, and I've seen it where people have been looting. They finally got themselves kitted. They've seen someone, and they're starting to get set up for like a long range firefight. Obviously, every hit counts like it would in a real life situation. You get shot, you're going down, uh, yeah. and then the server just shit itself, and they lose everything. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, I've been watching that for four hours for the absolute crescendo, and you've just taken it away, taken it away. So yeah, but yeah, we'll look into Daisy. We'll look into Daisy. But what? We've got two new, uh, we've got two news articles left, and I'm teeing off at half two, and we want to get a good hour in at least on Masters League. Shall we save these two for tomorrow? I only had, to I had one left, but yes, absolutely. Let's 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 do that. Let's save it because it's not time relevant anyway. The one that that I've got here. Uh, so let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. We are going to drop off. I mean, we are an hour and 15 minutes in for to the hour show anyway. So we will pick up with these loose bits of news that aren't time relevant. They're just a a little bit of a. Uh, a scout of the world anyway so we will drop things off apologies for all the sirens if you can hear those those are at my end uh yeah we are going to disappear for the scoop now though ladies and gentlemen we are going to do that because we have episode one for the week aka episode three overall of our masters of the league broadcast which will follow this we're going to go off the Salford national anthem you goddamn right uh, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> that's quality i'll take that uh, <laughs> 
All right, chill out, mate. Start off on it. <laughs> so, so we'll go offline now. We will be straight back on a few minutes later on after we've set up green screen and stuff anyway. And we will be back with Masters of the League. So if you've liked what you've seen, please feel free to hit the follow like Red Pendejo did a very short while ago. Um, like I say, we will go offline. Stick on the channel, though, because we will be back in five, ten minutes-ish. Uh, and we'll bring you a couple of hours of Master League action. Um, so, yes, have yourselves... A Actually, before we do that, Bib... Mm. Do you yes. want to add anything? Yes, I do. If you are familiar with this format at the end of the show, I basically ask you that if you see any, 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 it doesn't matter how bland the, the the news is, but if you see anything that you want to give your thoughts and opinions on, then do feel free to tag at we've got a beanio at Graham underscore day and most importantly at ice cream uploads on Twitter. We'll take your thoughts and opinions on the, the news article that you found and add our thoughts and opinions on the very next show, which will be at what time tomorrow, Graham Day? 10 a.m. Ish. Yeah, yeah. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget about that, man. It tickles me every time. Uh, so 10 a.m. ish tomorrow, we'll be back with the scoop. Uh, Major Pentatonic thank you very much for the follow much appreciated welcome to the stream just as we're about to go offline though we will be back at 10am tomorrow but we do have our modded PC Master League coming up in just a few seconds so stick around for that if you've got nothing better to do until we come back live in a few minutes and until the 10am ish stream tomorrow have yourselves a lovely day ladies and gentlemen and do you know what take the advice of the emote in the chat stay frosty <laughs>